Today on Law Weekly, we discuss issues surrounding the sincerity of the anti-corruption fight of the federal government. We chat with the Chairman Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, Professor Ishe Sage, and against the background of the swearing-in of a new Chairman for the Corruption and Financial Crime Cases Trial Monitoring Committee, some lawyers revisit the issues of the composition of the committee and give suggestions on how they can achieve their objectives. Plus our recap of the top trending stories from the courts. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Shola Shieli. The leaked memo which suggests that President Muhammadu Buhari knew about the reinstatement of the former chairman, Presidential Tax Force on Pension Reforms, Mr. Abdul Rashid Maina, has raised questions about the sincerity of this administration's fight against corruption. Some people say that the war against graft has derailed. Is there any truth in such claims? Law Weekly sought answers from the chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Professor Ishe Sage. Nigerians amuse me, particularly the elites, who probably are the greatest, or uh, were the greatest beneficiaries of corruption. They are looking for anything to hang on to, any straw, to be able to say the anti-corruption war has failed. Mine now is one case. So why are they failing to see the forest and they are only seeing one tree? Just because either they are acting in bad faith or they are horribly ignorant. Um, I don't see the big deal about mine. If um, some information was sent to the president, can they guarantee that he received it? And to buttress that point, the minute he got information that Miner has in fact been reabsorbed, he ordered that he should be sacked and they should look for him. So it's, it's a non-issue, really. We have about three million public servants in this country. All of them cannot be fighting equally against corruption. So if within the Buhari administration, you have, let us say, 1.5 million or 2 million, because the federal public service is the highest. And one or two people do something wrong. Therefore, the whole anti-corruption uh, <coughs> struggle has failed. That is a type of reasoning which is so irrational that one can say that a person making that conclusion is doing it out of arrant bad faith or is, uh, because he is a, is a beneficiary of corruption or his level of abysmal ignorance is so bad. Now let's look at the role played by the Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice in this whole issue. What do you make of that? Some people think that he should be sacked. Honestly, I'm disturbed by the role played by the Attorney General. He went on one technicality of there was some minor case before a magistrate which was discharged, looking at that irrelevant point and overlooking the major issue of corruption of over two billion which this man was alleged to have uh, filched away of the fact that he was a wanted person by the uh, EFCC of the fact that uh, the Interpol has his name on the list How did, why did he go on, on um, you know pandering to little little points and overlooking the major issue and then recommending something so offensive that it's almost giving a bad name to this administration. I, I can't understand what overcame the Attorney General on this matter. There's no rational explanation for his conduct. So do you think that the cause for his sack is justified? Well, I, I expect the President to look at the matter seriously and see whether uh, the, the, the Attorney General is, is um, contributing sufficient value to his administration and take a decision on that basis. 